How you doing everybody? Today we're going to take a quick look at the latest version of The Magnificent Seven, directed by Antoine Fuqua and starring Denzel Washington and Chris Pratt. This movie mostly takes place in a small western town that is being terrorized by a rich industrialist who wants to take over the town and bulldoze it to the ground since it's sitting on some prime mining land. Desperate for help, the people of the town turn to Warrant Officer Sam Chisholm, played by Denzel Washington, to save them from this evil industrialist. Chisholm puts together a ragtag group of seven people who kick the corrupt sheriff and his goons out of town, teach the townspeople how to defend themselves, and of course this all leads to this huge gunfight at the end. Like you do. So here we have yet another unnecessary remake, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, sometimes unnecessary remakes can surprise you. This one did not. In fact, I had trouble coming up with things to say about this movie because there's not a whole lot that's noteworthy about it. The only real noteworthy thing is for a Western, it has a rather diverse cast. The Magnificent Seven themselves are made up of a black guy, three white guys, an Asian, a Mexican, and a Native American. And he's actually played by a Native American actor and not Johnny Depp in Redface. And the de facto leader of sorts of the small town that they're trying to save is played by Haley Bennett, who is not only a natural leader, but also a damn good shot. And the cast is made up of some incredibly talented people, all of whom do an excellent job with what they're given, Unfortunately, most of them aren't given a whole lot. The only real standouts are Denzel Washington, who is a total badass, Vincent D'Onofrio, who has some delightful moments of weirdness here and there. His character was interesting. And to a lesser extent, Chris Pratt, who is basically just playing himself. The story is at least serviceable, there's nothing overly wrong with it, but it's not terribly creative either. It's the same kind of western story you've already seen a thousand times before. The first thing I remember thinking when I walked out of the theater was, man, Blazing Saddles is a lot more violent than I remember. Because it's pretty much the same story, just without all the silliness. Well, okay, there's a bit of silliness, like the little moments of weirdness from Vincent D'Onofrio's character, and there's some unintentional silliness with Ethan Hawke's character name, which is Goodnight Robichaux. Goodnight Robichaux. That is somehow both silly and pretentious. I will give the movie this, the final shootout between the miners and the townspeople is a whole lot of fun and has a much higher body count than I expected. There's a lot of people that die in that fight. Hell, if you're going to watch the movie, I would almost recommend just skipping ahead to that part because you're not missing a whole lot. And it's got a pretty good score from James Horner and sadly, I believe this will end up being his last film. So while the movie does have its moments, I would say it's not really worth going out of your way to see, but when it hits DVD, I'd say it's worth a rental. And that's all I have to say about The Magnificent Seven, which was more like the decent seven, really. So until next time, take care.